This week, episode 275 of Stogie Geeks, we have a awesome interview lined up with Chris Clark. He is a cigar broker with Patriot Cigar Brokers. He represents Hiram and Solomon, Rockefeller Cigars, Epic Cigars, and Ohana Cigars with more to come. We're going to talk about some of the effects that have happened uh, with some of the protests over in Nicaragua. There might be a scotch of baseball added on to the program, just a little bit, and uh, what we've been smoking right here on the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. A Venice Cigar Club located in Warwick, Rhode Island is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Episode 275 of Stogie Geeks. I am your host, Joe Hozempa, who does not do any fighting in the streets. He does it in formal, civilized places. We have, via Skype, we have Chris Clark of Patriot Cigar Brokers. Chris, how are you? Well, I'm not too bad, buddy. How are you? Good. Chris, no stranger to the show. You were on probably already, believe it or not, it was about 10, 12 weeks ago. Uh, I was doing some some re- research. You were representing Hiram and Solomon Cigars. You're still representative for Hiram and Solomon Cigars over in the Northeast. You've come out with some good blends, but you've recently been affected by uh, some of the protests over in Nicaragua, so it's a good chance for you to catch up here on the show and and let the consumers know what's going on we have ipcpr right around the corner baseball's in full swing and uh looks like if you're looking at home want to cash in on chris right quick right there give a change of screen looks like we now cash in on me it looks like we are on opposite sides of the fence, my friend. <laughs> yeah. you know, so we'll probably spend some time and talk about that. So what's been, and then besides Hiram and Solomon, I want to take some time out. You, you know, uh, as a broker, you're out there and you're doing your thing. Um, you know, you, you represent some other brands that the Stogie Geeks listener might want to seek out or, um, you know, kind of give us an idea as to what they are. Obviously, it's Ohana. Another one is Epic, and the other one is Rockefeller. And behind the scenes, I know you got some other stuff in the works too, which I think is pretty cool. But you know, whatever you want to talk about, shoot. Yeah. So uh, right now, I'm actually smoking the uh, the Rockefeller Maduro. Uh, great cigar, um, 2010 blend. <clears throat> Excuse me. Full-bodied uh, Maduro brings great flavors in. Um, so I work a lot with Hiram and Solomon, Rockefeller, Epic, and Ohana. Um, Ohana and Epic are both up-and-coming brands in the Northeast. Uh, Rockefeller is a known brand, but doesn't really have a, uh, a mark in the Northeast. So we're working hard uh, with Rockefeller, Ohana, and Epic to really bring those to the forefront. Um, when I started, I started with Hiram and Solomon, not knowing I was going to kind of get a brokerage going. And um, it's been a great experience. Um, Rockefeller really takes pride in their cigars, as do Ohana and Epic. Um, Rockefeller, though, comes in at a, at a smaller price point for the consumer, and really you're getting a, a great cigar for, for what you're paying. Um, with Ohana and Epic, they run about average to what you would expect to see in New England. Um, and they offer a great product as well. So, you know, if you don't have those in your stores right now, um, I certainly would love to hear from you. Um, we have a page. It's Hiram New England um, on Facebook, and or Hiram and Solomon of New England on Facebook. Um, and of course, my personal page uh, is Chris Clark. Um, you know, the thing I like about about Rockefeller um, and Hiram and Solomon is they're very big on community. Um, 
Ohana and Epic, uh, much the same. They really support the local charities and things like that. So I, I really try as a public servant to, to utilize companies that really work with the community and provide for the community. Right. Uh, and now back home, your, your home, uh, you are an elected official and a volunteer firefighter as well. That is correct. Um, I recently, um, back in November, I won the election for my ward for school board. Mm. Um, we just finished the budget process and, and all that. So basically, I serve on the school board uh, trying to help out the kids and get the best curriculums and things possible. Mm. And then I serve on a um, small fire department. We do about 300 to 350 calls a year. Um, as a matter of fact, I did one last night at midnight. Uh, it was a structure fire. Um, so I could be called out at any point in time. As a matter of fact, I got my pager sitting right next to me here, uh, just in case. Uh, anybody um, up there, don't be starting fires for the next 25 or 30 minutes. We got That's right, yeah. We, nobody, we, yeah. Nobody's starting fires. We got to talk about sticks and stuff, you know? That's right. We, we yeah. got shit to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, com community work is very important for sure. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a proponent as well for some of the stuff that uh, I do here. Uh, and some of the stuff that I do outside of uh, Security Weekly and Stogie Geeks as well. So, you know, it's 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 great to give back. Now, you recently had an event for Hiram and Solomon. Um, I caught on your Facebook page where it was for a memorial, correct, or something like that? Uh, yeah, so we've done a few different events. Um, we have... A, an event in Massachusetts, um, in Attleboro, Massachusetts, um, for a lodge that was raising money for a local charity there. Um, we had another one in New Hampshire um, where we raised money for the Shriner Potentate's uh, wife's charity. That's a mouthful. Mm. Um, but basically that was for the children's hospital down there for kids who were hard of hearing. We uh, raised enough money to buy hearing aids for like 10 kids. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then we did another one. Um, oh, I forget where it was. It was up here in Maine, uh, but it was for a bike club. And basically – um, they were raising money for um, suicide awareness. Mm. Um, so we really pride ourselves in that. Typically, we make pretty large donations um, to be raffled off and things like that. So Yeah, there's a lot of different issues that go on. So definitely thank you for your service and, and, and doing that for sure. Uh, what's going on in the world of Rockefeller cigars? Where, uh, I, they're pretty, I was down in Florida, and they seem to have, have a presence over there. Are you looking to change that over in the Northeast? Yeah, so we've got a great presence with Rockefeller uh, throughout the uh, the southeast um, and out west uh, and up into the Midwest. We don't really have a footprint up here in the northeast. Um, Kevin took over the company, bought out his partner, um, and kind of rebranded the cigar. Um, same great blend that Rockefeller has been known for for decades, um, but now um more of a community aspect to the cigar mm -hmm. um a more um uh, honest and trusting relationship if you will um with the company and so basically what i'm looking to do is the same thing i did with hiram is just grow here in the northeast and really just bring a good product to the people mm -hmm. um i it's, can't it sounds like like you know and and again i'm not trying to put you in a awkward spot at all so if i dig deep just say yo man next subject that's fine you know i'm not trying to compare one against the other but when it seems with hiram they have a branding and positioning message they have a mission and they you know have different causes that they get behind and stuff like that. It, it and and again, this is just from an outsider perspective. Business. It just seems that you know th that might be the missing piece of the puzzle because if people have tried a Rockefeller cigar, and again, I'm not here to compare one against the other. I'm just trying to to use it as an example because ultimately, you're the one who's on the road. So you're the one who has the sword and the shield, has to go and represent all the brands that you represent for your company, and you have to position all of the brands that you represent and then obviously ultimately fight for um, shelf space within some of, the, uh, some, some of the humidors. And so, you know, I don't know if it was 
that people tried Rockefeller before and they kind of just faded because there was no market presence or uh, are they going to try to do anything to try to, to put their field reps in a better position to, to tell their story? Sure, absolutely. Um, that's a great question, you know. And, and in reference to Hiram, Hiram really supports um, charities, uh, but mostly Masonic-based charities um, because we try to support the Brotherhood. Rockefeller does a great job with us. Um, I have a huge support system with Kevin. Um, if I need anything at all, he is right there, right on top of everything that I need. Um, the customer comes first, um, and I think that's kind of um, what differentiates Rockefeller from other companies is that the customer always comes first. So it doesn't matter um, if you know a customer absolutely hates the cigar and wants their money back. Kevin's going to give them their money back, and he's going to try and make a cigar that the customer will like. Yeah, sure. To take us through um, some of the brand, uh, the uh, blends of those cigars, because because I'm sure. not familiar with the brand. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've been trying to get Kevin here on the show. Open it, open microphone if you can make that happen for sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, definitely want it because because I, because I'm because I love brands that have been around, and then they're trying to compete. In this cigar environment, I mean, you know, it, it kind of almost seems like you know we, we have the same conversation, but you know, it, market share and market position is really everything, and has nothing to do with the cigar industry, but specifically, obviously, Stogie Geek Show, we we talk about the cigars. The market position is so important because that's what brings the brand awareness for the consumers to walk into the brick and mortar shop and say, "Hey, I want." X cigar. Absolutely. And I, and I think it's a really tough position to be in. And I'll tell you why. Because, for example, you walk into, let's say, Brian's place at Churchill's, right? And uh, you walk in there and the customer base is so diverse. So these guys want a specific cigar flavor, not necessarily a specific cigar brand. Mm. So the hardest part of making a cigar, especially when you've been around for a while, is knowing what the customer base is going to want. So take, for example, our Maduro, which is what I'm smoking right now. Um, your typical Maduro is going to be a little on the sweeter side if it's aged right, um, and it's going to provide a nice full-body flavor. We took our Maduro another step, and I can't quote blends right now because I don't have them right in front of me. Sure. Um, however, I can tell you that with our, like with our Maduro, you get a little more pepper out of it. Um, you still get the sweetness, but it's like a sweet and spicy. Um, and so you get a different taste out of the Maduro. So guys that are sick and tired of smoking the same old, same old, you look at them and say, well, listen, my Maduro has some interesting flavors that you may not have tasted in a Maduro before. Why don't you give it a try? Um, you know, that kind of gives us that little niche, you know, whereas like Hiram and Solomon has a very specific flavor. Um, and people go to it because they know that they're not going to be overpowered. Mm -hmm. Our cigar uh, at Rockefeller offers a step up where you get a nice wide base of flavors. Um, the burn is beautiful, hand-constructed. Um, and the biggest thing is with us and what I'm finding in the industry right now, especially with everything that's going on in Nicaragua, which we'll talk about in a second, but, um, you know, like Kevin tripled his order. Uh, back in February because he saw everything that was unfolding, everything that was coming. So we're not backordered with Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the biggest thing is a lot of companies right now are backordered because they can't even get cigars out of the country. Mm. Um, so we're going to capitalize on that and we're really going to push and we're going to move. And, you know, um, I think that you'll start to see Rockefeller popping up more. Um, because of the customer service base, the ability for us to put a product on the shelf that offers a different variety than what you're used to. Um, so yeah, awesome. What, what's going on with Ohana and uh, Ohana and Epic? So with Ohana and Epic, um, it's tough because there's two brands that are really trying to break the market, mm. um, and so Epic has a market. Uh, internationally, uh, but not much to speak of 
uh, nationally. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, with Epic, people go, who's that? Sure. Um, so it's basically just getting people to smoke the product, try it, and enjoy it. Um, it's a slow-going process, but Dean and I are working together, and I really feel like that by the end of the year, you'll start seeing um, Epic in a lot more stores. Um, but people are very weary of bringing it in because it is a $10 cigar that nobody's ever heard of. Sure, sure. Um, and with Ohana... You know, Ryan and Holly have done great things. Uh, Ryan Rodriguez is a genius when it comes to cigars. His blends are great, um, and he does a great job in making sure that his cigars are quality product. Um, he's got a lot of success with the Underground Cigar Shop in, um, in Texas. So if you haven't had Ohana, um, we have one shop right now in New Hampshire, in Keene, New Hampshire, at CCNH. But if you really want to get them and you don't have a shop in your area, you can go to undergroundcigar.com, um, and you can order your Ohanas on there. Yeah, um, yeah. we're going to take some time and talk about the Underground, too. He, he, he I'll tell you, um, both lover and a fan base of the Boutique Cigars, for sure. Yeah, you know. Don's an amazing man. Uh, he does great things for the boutique industry. Um, and uh, for the sake of not getting uh, fined by the FCC, I won't quote him um, on what he has to say about the, the big corporations um, because I believe everybody that's involved in the cigar industry is important. Um, but you will never find a cigar that's not boutique in his shop. Yeah, so. yeah. That's uh, that's um. It's a very diplomatic way of putting it. I've actually had a chance to, <laughs> to connect with him. We're, we're, we're trying to do. Uh, I, I'm. We're, we'll we'll include you when we get to the Hiram and Solomon uh, segment of this segment here. When we talk about that and what exclusive cigar is over there, mm. I'd like to do a interview with uh, Don. Um, we definitely have to have our producers on the beep button, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but um you know we kind of edit it just a scotch but um definitely w would like to do that and then have like you you and ability and, and and some of the other boutiques that are all in that mix and maybe do like a, a whole virtual round uh round table i'd love to get that going uh for, I, for sure because i will say that don um really gives a chance to the small guy you know He's broken a lot of cigars into the market. Ohana's one of them. Sure. Um, yeah, and and, you know, and and you know what I what, what I want to say. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I have a, a train of thought about about Don. A classic example of taking a shot with the little guys, you know. And again, you know, in any industry, you have giants, right? You have giants in the industry. You have people who control the industry. You have there, and then you know, I speak to to so many different people within the cigar industry at multiple different levels. Either either for a pre interview here for Stogie Geeks or pe people I know in the industry, and it's like you know, the 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 smaller guys are trying to get that all market share, and they're gradually getting it. The bigger guys are trying to change their blends. To kind of match, especially if they were not known from a Nicaraguan blend and trying to get in there. And the shop owners are really in between. And they're in between not only with the tax laws of their specific state and they have to deal with that. We can actually put that in the docket too. I have an update for you on, on how you got involved in the Rhode Island thing. But, um, you know, and... and it, the, the shop owners, oh, well, I don't want to try anything new because it doesn't sell. And I tell them all the time i tell the shop owner, it doesn't sell because your humidor work is suck that's why <laughs> no it, it's true i'm sorry it doesn't it sell it doesn't sell because you're because because 90 percent of the people walking into any humidor okay and it, 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 it's 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 natural consumer behavior for someone to want to try something different. Now, I'm not on a boutique crusade, and and I'm not on a a a, a uh, anti big corporations crusade, but you know, it's like you know, it it, it drives me crazy when like, oh, well, I'm not going to bring it in be, be, because it doesn't sell. And I and I, you 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 know me and my personality, right? I say it doesn't sell because your worker doesn't even know the blend. Your worker I, doesn't listen, even I get it all your, the time. Your worker does not even know the customer's palate. So if you're listening to this show and you own a retail shop, okay, have a weekly sales meeting with your staff, please, okay? Take one stick a week, okay? 
That's why you go to 50 new sticks in a year. After two years, it'll be 100 sticks. Most of you only have 200 facings at best anyway. So put a four-year plan together to take a stick a week and educate them on that stick. And I guarantee you, you'll blow through the boxes. All right, you I'm going to take what? a sip of drink. I'm go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I this is what happened. This is what happened when Paul leaves me alone, right? I do it exactly. <laughs> what What are you drinking there, anyways? Oh, great subject. This This is uh, an an art in the age ginger snap. Nasty. It's a, It's like a, a whiskey. <laughs> nah, dude. It's like a whiskey ginger molasses concoction that I mixed with more with more whiskey to cut it even better. Oh, wow. You're going to have to give me some of that when I come down next week. But yeah. you're, you're, you're absolutely right, and I hear it all the time. Um, you know, and, and to what you just said, shop owners, if your rep isn't coming in your store once a month and talking to your employees and educating them on the cigars, then you're wasting your time with that company. Sure. Um, because I go into my shops – and the shops that I spend time in and I educate the employees in, my cigars do very, very well. Whether it's Ohana, Epic, it doesn't matter. Um, the reps need to do their job too. I mean, and that's how we're going to grow. Excuse me, that's how we're going to grow the industry mm -hmm. is by going in and educating people. And when we see a customer that's smoking the same thing over and over and over again, looking at them and saying, "Listen, try this cigar. Go in the humidor and buy it. If you don't like it, I'll buy you a new one." Um, that's one of my biggest challenges to people is try the cigar. If you don't like it, I'll buy you a different one. Right, right. And it's uh, just and, and, and I understand that people are creatures of habit. Believe me, I have some friends. I have a friend, Ian, who only smokes like if he walks into the humidor, I, I could be blindfolded and he could be blindfolded and he's going to get the same three cigars. He never tries anything new and he goes, well, this way it does disappoint me. I said, I understand that consumer behavior, but... But but you never get a chance to kind of grow and experience your palate. Like, because a lot of people ask me all the time, right? Uh, what's your favorite cigar? And I say, and I always come back and say, what's the time of day? Uh, is it after dinner? Is it in the morning? Is it not? What are we doing? And they're like, why? What does that matter? I smoked yesterday. Right. It's like, it's like, you know, I like so many, like so many cigars. Like, like even when once a year here on Story Geeks, we do our top 10 or top 20. And it's like, it's hard. It's 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 hard because we, we do a top ten of what came out new. So last year for 2017, we did what came out new in 2017 and what was our top ten, right? And uh, former co-hosts of Stogie Geeks did it. Paul did it. I did it, right? And and it's like it's hard. It's not hard to come up with the sticks that came out. It's hard to narrow it down to ten or twenty, especially if you if you have a cigar a day or or even if you have three a week. There's so many new blends out there, and there's so much creativity, and there's so many stories to tell. And I think that number one, the, the the consumers go into the humidor with blinders on, and I think that they truly, truly, truly need to be shepherded by the um, by the the, the uh, brick and mortar employee to really concentrate on their palate. And like you know, I have stopped working at a cigar shop probably 19, 20 months from now, right? Like like ago. And I could literally pick every person in the thing and tell you what their palate is. And now, gr granted, okay, I'm a little bit more into the cigar process, but if a cigar employee took the time out to understand uh, even one consumer a week who always shows up at the shop to get to know his, his or her palate, I'm telling you, they're going to push a lot more sticks and there's going to be a lot more room for, for the shelf space, for sure. I'm convinced of it because, a.k.a., Look at Don. Look at his success story over over, over at, at, at the underground cigar shop. He's now getting exclusives that are exclusive to his shop. I know he did it with um, Mike Bellity of Imperia Cigars. He did the uh, RAF stick from, uh, from uh, MLB Cigar Ventures. I believe, I'm not 100% sure, we are going to have uh, Barry M McDonald from David P. Ehrlich on, but I believe like that little launch thing is going into making, and now you have something going on with them from Hir uh, Hiram and Solomon. Yeah, so Don's really good at that, um, you know, and we recognize the fact that Don is probably one of the... Uh, 
best performing boutique shops in the country. Okay, I'm going to interrupt um, you there for, you know, for two seconds. And you know why? You know why? Because he, he talks about the blend and he makes his shop accessible. Even if you can't ge geographically drive there, he's online. Right, I've been saying this for 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 the since January second, twenty seventeen, that I've been on Stogie Geeks. Hope you enjoy the show. If not, Paul at StogieGeeks.com. You can email him if you like it. Joe H at StogieGeeks.com and let me know. Uh, also, right, but no, seriously, like he, he, you know, he makes he makes the boutiques accessible to the people, and I truly believe that there are consumers out there who want to consume new sticks. Absolutely, and and the other thing he does is, if you call the shop, um, and I don't have the number offhand, but if you call Underground Cigar Shop, and you say, "I'm a rookie, I know nothing about cigars," um, they're going to ask you 500 questions before they even attempt to sell you a cigar. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and it's amazing. So what we did was we partnered with uh, with Don at Hiram and Solomon, and we came out. Um, his customers were saying that the Veiled Prophet took too long to smoke. Um, it was too expensive, mm. too big. Mm -hmm. I agree. So we the, came out, the ring gauge is too big, but go on. Absolutely. So <laughs> we came out with a different size. It's a Monarch 6x54 or 6x56, one of the two. Um, but basically, it's a smaller cigar. It's shorter, um, and uh, it's a smaller ring gauge. And it takes about 45 minutes to smoke, but it's the same tobacco, same flavor. So we gave Don exclusive exclusivity um, to release that cigar nationally for the next 30 days. Um, and he's going to kill it. And I don't even know if we'll have anything left when he's done. Um, you know, with Ohana, Ohana did the, the friends and family and the, um, and the candy cane at uh, Christmas time. Don sold 250 boxes of candy canes in a day. Right. Um, right. You know, because he promotes it, people want it, people look for it. Um, you know, so really he's doing great things for this industry. Um, and as a matter of fact, he, um, you know, is in constant contact with me. Um, our rep down there, uh, Robert Matthews, um, call him Bobby Boucher. Um, he does great things with the underground. They're always raising money for different charities. Bill Murray, if you're watching this right now, uh, $5,000 to the charity of your choice if you show up at Underground Cigars. Um, Don Wiggins is a huge fan of yours. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's unreal. It really is. It just goes to show the power of knowledge mm -hmm. is what it is. Yeah, and, and you know, he, he's such a breath of fresh air where – it's like, you know, because the, the, all I hear is excuses all day. I bought these cigars, and they sit on the shelf. But, but, but then in the same paragraph, the cigar manager or humidor manager or even shop owner, depending on the, the, the layout of the shop, they're always like, oh, well, the consumers want, want something new. Well, educate yourself and show them something new. The consumers are there. The consumers are there. And, and, and like I said, the, the numbers that he's putting out is because he makes his shop accessible to everyone. You don't have to geographically drive up and it's not cash and carry. You can go online. You can call a shop. Like you said, you, 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 you get a bunch of questions. You, 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 he'll answer your questions and he'll put you in, in, the, in the right cigar that, that, that would suit your palate. And, and even if you think it's a lot of questions, cigars, cigars are a journey, right? They're a journey, Absolutely. and and you know each cigar means something different at its perspective, uh, uh, a respective point in time, and I think a lot of consumers miss that. You know, some of them just go because they, you know, they 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 want to you know have a cigar with their friends and and talk sports or politics or whatever. And and I get all of that camaraderie. I do get it, but it's like ultimately, you know, it's 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 a breaker where. There is no class system. There is no. There is no racial boundaries. There's no. There's no sexual boundaries. There's some shops that do very well and have a, a big following of females, and and the, and there are other shops that have you know a kind of mixed bag, and there are other shops that are obviously there, and 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 that's something I've seen over the past couple of years uh, here in the Northeast is that more and more females are getting into that because m maybe they like the camaraderie as well of w either, you know, with, 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 with people. Because it's ultimate, um, it puts everyone on a level playing field. 
But, you know, what's in the background? The background is the cigar and ultimately the, the cigar industry. And, you know, I just think that, you know, repeat the, the consumers, I mean, obviously from a stogie geek perspective, you know, sure, uh, trying new cigars is pretty cool. And believe me, there, there are some out there that are just like everyone else's cigar. But, you know, you, you never know when you can find a diamond in the rough, you know, for sure. I'll tell you, man, I've found some cigars, um, you know, I talk to shop owners quite often that are just like, well, the cigars don't sell here, the customers aren't going to like them, blah, 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 blah. And I love all my shop owners. I love every shop owner I talk to. So when I, when I say this next statement, I don't mean any disrespect to any shop owner. But if you own a cigar shop, you have a duty to educate the customer. Of course you do. You have a duty to grow the cigar brands and the cigar following. Um, it's a lifestyle, like you said. And, you know, cigars have brought me into contact with some people I thought I would never meet. I mean, I've, you know, I've met some very important people um, smoking cigars, celebrities even. Um, you know, I've done some golf tournaments and stuff like that where I've met basketball players and baseball players and hockey players. Joe Hosempa. Um, yeah, Joe Hosempa. <laughs> uh, we don't talk. We don't talk about him because he's a Yankee loving bastard. But... Mm. You know. So, what do you think about this year with baseball? Let's go. What do you think about that? Oh, you want to talk baseball? Let's talk baseball. I think about, honestly, uh, uh, I think honestly, the best. Um, the absolute oh so the best the best um thing that the Red Sox and the Yankees could have done was have uh Alex Cora and Aaron Boone <laughs> manage the teams <laughs> i think and, and, you know because because i speak to a lot of fans on both sides right and i says this is this is just it's 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 a story in the making. I like the fact, and and it's not who they are, and what their stats were and whatnot. It's when they played, okay, and how young they are, like as far as their age. You know what I mean? So you know the, their age, which means both teams. I solely solely believe are poised for growth. Okay, uh, I don't think that it's going to be a if the Sox win it this year. Then the Yankees win it next year. I think it's going to be another uh, maybe decade or five, six years of both of them rising to the top of that division. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to have to play each other to get through. And what I find fascinating more from a baseball fan perspective is two things. Number one, every time I wear this hat, someone makes a comment. That's okay. We're not going to go there. This is a story geek show. This isn't crying with Joe, right? Number two. <laughs> number two. Right? Right? right number, <laughs> right? Number two. I always tell them that, listen, like our division, you have to win 99 games to get there. In other division, you got... You win 88 games, like like 88's the ticket. You know what I mean? Like you know, if you you go into NL, you you you, you win 88 games, you're in. You got to win 99 games in our division in order to even get there. And then what happens is when we get there, I think that the Sox are less guilty of this than the Yankees for sure. Is when you get there, they focus on offense too much. As a, like I believe the Sox do too. But the Yankees totally do. Like, they focus too much on offense. And it's like, let me tell you something. I went to the 2001 World Series with Kurt Schillen when he was at Arizona Diamondbacks right after 9-11. I mean, President Bush threw out the ball, security up the wazoo. It was crazy, right? But the, the, the National League outscored the Yankees 52-16 to 16 in that series. So what does that say? You need freaking defense. And both teams try to get all these bats and try to get all that. I mean, you know, you guys have much better pitching. And then when I tell you, they say, well, you know, you don't sound like a true Yankee fan. No, I'm a realist. Like, when's the last time the Yankees have had lights out pitcher? I love the Red Sox. CC Sabathia. I'm like, when? It's terrible. You know what I mean? So what say you about this year? What do you think? 
Well, I mean, I think if you look at the American League in general this year, um, pitching certainly plays a key role. I mean, the Sox have had more shutouts than anybody this year. They have the, still have the lowest ERA in the uh, American League. I'm not sure if it's still the majors or not, but overall, I think the Sox are a well-rounded team. I think Alex Cora brought something to the team that just – Hasn't been seen since the Theo Epstein era. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I was nervous when Theo left um, because I didn't think we'd ever get back to that point. And I look at the rivalry this year. I mean, already there's been a brawl. Um, and it's only going to get worse from here, and I love it. And I, I, I'm a diehard Sox fan, but I have mad respect for the Yankees. See, um, that stop, that's when I know... The just like me, I am a diehard Yankee fan. I have autograph pitches in my house. I have uh, I I I used when I was single. I used to decorate my house at playoff season, right? And it was crazy, well, right? Like it was crazy. I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. About. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Look this, at that. This is my man cave right here, buddy. I like it. Look at, it right now. Look at that. Well, you know. That won't set foot two feet in, in in my house. But no, I have respect for the Red Sox organization. I I think that you know they they they've they've done a good job. What I what and and I think that you know what what I don't what I don't like about the Red Sox is when when they get kind of smacked around a little bit, they get very very frustrated. And what I like about the Yankees is. Even if it's like David and Goliath and they forgot their sword and shield or however you want to paint a picture, they still try to do their best as what they can do. And, I mean, you know, I remember when, when a couple of years ago under Terry Francona, you guys had, uh, you know, some, some meltdowns and all that stuff. But, but I have mad respect for, for the organization for sure. Um, you know, and, and, and I think, honestly, um, I think it's great for sports. Uh, most sports have their rivalries. Uh, on my radio show, I did a, a whole uh, on opening day. I used to do a Red Sox Yankees kind of roundtable um, for opening day because I was actually ironically on a Yankee station that played Yankee baseball. So, so my show was was right before then. So it was a good transition, and we get a roundtable and people telling stories and all of that stuff. And and but the rivalry is not what it will ever be. From 2003, four, you know, five. It, it won't. It I, would, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think I, I think I disagree with that. I, I think, think it's that on its way year, up. This I, year, <laughs> I think this is my prediction right now. And I and I hate to say this, Sox fans are gonna hate me, but this is my prediction right now. It's gonna be the AL pennant game. Uh, it's gonna be Game Seven. We're gonna lose to the Yankees because we can never seem to get past the Yankees in the playoffs. So. Um, I I truly believe those two teams are going to be battling for the AL um, championship, and I think that it'll either be the Yankees or the Sox in the World Series. Man, that's mm. that's my prediction. Mm. Yeah, let me uh, let me ask you one more baseball question. What do you think about Aaron Boone protecting Joe Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I'd have done. I think I'd have done the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you, like, if they don't make that kid captain, like, seriously, for sure. That kid, I mean, class act, you know what I mean? Like, class act all the way, which is not a track record for those who wear pinstripes, for sure, as a as a diehard fan. There's not a lot of class acts on that team, for sure. But, um, you know, uh, Judge, I mean, you know, totally, you know, like, you know, there for the team, team player. Um, you know, I think that what he what he, he showed a lot of leadership by separating the fights. I'm not a fan of the fights. I actually was at the game before that. So I actually went to the Yankees Red Sox that game before the fight on the Tuesday and they fought on the on the Wednesday. And uh, that was like the fourteen two Red Sox like crushed the Yankees. And um you know, it it it's it's so great for sports. It's so it's so great to see. And I actually think it's pretty cool that they're gonna be uh playing in London as well. You know, over next year and stuff like that. So I think that's that's pretty cool stuff. But you know, this is not a sports show, but I always like a good, a good, <laughs> a good, a good sports conversation. Uh, I am uh, getting a ping here from a listener who has a question for you specifically, and it says, "What advice do you uh, give when you try to penetrate the market um, with 
having a Maduro or Habano option, um, do you change your selling style and do you change your pitch based upon if it's a Maduro or if it's a Connecticut or uh, if it's even a Northeast or, or uh, a shop outside of the Northeast. And by the way, if you have any questions, you can go to Joe H at StogieGeeks.com or you can just ping them over on Facebook. And if we can squeeze them in, we can do that. <clears throat> so that's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm always, I can always be reached on Facebook. Um, Chris Clark on Facebook, Clark has an E, um, or my page, Hiram and Solomon of New England. Um, you know, and my email is uh, Hiram New England at gmail.com. Um, I don't ever change my sales pitch, and I'll tell you why. I'm not in the sales industry. Mm. I am in the joy industry, so I spread joy. Um, what I do is I ask my shop owner, what do you like in a cigar? So just like if I was going to sell a cigar to a customer at his shop, I ask him what he likes or she likes. And most of the time, they'll tell you straight up or they'll say, I like everything. If you get the I like everything answer, you look at him and you say, so do I, but what do you really like? <laughs> um, and typically, they'll start to give you their flavor profile and you base it off of that. If you only have a Maduro and a Habano option, I typically go with the Habano first. Mm. Um, and that's because it's going to give you a little bit lighter wrapper, a little bit sweeter flavor, and you don't know what they've been smoking already. Sure. Um, so it's important that you don't start out too heavy because if it's their first cigar of the day, they're going to hate it. Um, so, And my, my sales pitch is always just about the same. It's really telling people about the company. Um, if you don't believe in your product, you won't make it in this industry. Um, so if you're selling a cigar that you don't believe in, you won't make it. Um, you have to believe in what you're selling. I believe in all my product, and I 100% believe that I can put it up against any product on the market, and people like it just as much as a $100 cigar. Um, talk about your ratings. Talk about um, different shops you have in the area, how well they're doing, what they're doing, um, how you have successful events, um, what your company has to offer that other companies don't have to offer. For example, with Hiram and Solomon, um, we offer a 20% of our profit goes back to charity, but we also offer some of the best events in the industry um, with cotton lights, uh, blending seminars, and things similar to that. So really, you need to tailor it to what the shop owner wants to hear. Um, but never lie, never make stuff up. Uh, make sure everything that you say is 100% truth because this is a small industry. Um, and I get calls all the time from all over the country and territories I don't even cover because shop owner so-and-so in Maine told shop owner so-and-so in California when he was on his vacation about me. Mm -hmm. um, and so word spreads very, very quickly. Um, and once you – you really got to build a name for yourself. So put the time in. You know, Brian over at Churchill's. Um, his customers will tell you that I'm I'm their favorite rep because I'm there all the time. They mm -hmm. see me constantly, um, and they like it because if they have an issue with my cigar, I can fix it. And right. that's another thing. The shop owner wants to know what are you going to do for quality control. So that would be my advice. Just be you. Be the person that you are. Don't lie. Don't make stuff up. And and really promote your company and what your company has to offer. Yeah, I would I would put them in a Habano too if I was a rep. You know. Uh, for sure. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, I like the Habanos. Uh, I think that, um, from a boutique perspective, we, we have not even touched that the blending possibilities on, on that yet. I think that that's still, you know, people still migrate to either the Connecticut's or the Maduro or the Ecuadorian <laughs> Connecticut or something like that. You know, the Habano I think is, is, um, is you can do a lot with that wrapper and i'm looking forward to to seeing what's coming out over in the industry as well so nicaragua back in april right there was some and and i know that uh we're gonna spend some time on this uh there was some protests that started um from the national social security institute when the um the inss instituted a five percent tax increase on contributions by the employers and employees in Nicaragua and the government said it was necessary um, for, for the system because obviously it's on the verge of collapse and 
I mean, you know, I, 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 I try not to talk about politics, but when politics spreads over to riots and then spreads over to chaos, either be it emotional chaos or physical chaos uh, out, out in the streets, um, Hiram Solomon it was recently affected by that. And I've done a little bit of research before the show. Uh, in regards to, to 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 these riots and how it affected the the cigar industry, and I've actually researched about four different companies, and you know some of the companies w gave official statements um, that you know although that you know we're deeply sorry of what happened over in Nicaragua. Uh, however, you know you're not affected and. Those companies tend to be on the uh, bigger scale, and then w when I when I did some more digging around, um, the it, it seems to me that obviously the uh, smaller boutiques have been affected um, by that. So take us through the process. Now it's <coughs> April 2018, and you're repping Hiram and Solomon, and I'm assuming. You're watching TV or news or whatever, sitting in the fire station, of course, getting ready. And then all of a sudden, I'm sure at some point you got a call from the powers to be over at Hiram and Solomon. Take us through what that was like for you and what you did as a rep uh, in order to counteract that. And where are you guys now? So, yeah, it really was a scary process. Um, I have a lot of friends down in Nicaragua. Um, and, of course, our the Placencia factories down in Esteli. Um, and at first, it was just riots uh, west of Esteli. Um, and if you know anything about Nicaragua, you fly into the airport, and there's one road that you travel down three hours to get you to Esteli. Essentially, they blocked off that road. Um, and what happened really was that basically the government came out and said, we're going to lower not only lower your Social Security income, but we're going to tax it another 5%. Mm. Um, which in America, they just take the money out of Social Security and pretend to pay it back later and don't tell <laughs> you that Social Security is running out. We're not talking about there, At least they were honest <laughs> with their people. Right, right. Um, <laughs> so basically, the factories were in jeopardy of being burned down. So I get a phone call. Um, it was around the beginning of April, middle of April, um, from Eddie basically saying our product's been delayed. Mm. And I said, okay, not a big deal. You know, we'll, we'll work on what we got. So for about a month, I sold uh, just three of the lines that we had because that's what we had in the humidor. And I slowly watched the warehouse deplete to nothing Yeah. to the point where I had the only box of cigars in the whole company. Mm. Um, and... Basically, what had happened was the riots were so bad, the pilot was scared that he was going to get killed. Um, and the people that were bringing the cigars to the airport were afraid they were going to get hijacked or killed. Um, and people just didn't care. The, the only thing they're thinking about is showing the government that they're not going to put up with with what's going on. And I, and I totally agree with why they're rioting. I, I don't necessarily agree with the way they're doing it, but I um, certainly understand why they're doing it. And so now... Um, here we are at the beginning of June. Um, the cigars just came in today, um, uh, two and a half months late, and we're back to full stock. We can start shipping on Monday. Um, I've already put in a bunch of orders, so you should start seeing Hiram and Solomon back on the shelves. Um, officially, um, from Hiram and Solomon, um, our hearts go out to everybody in Nicaragua. Um, no human beings should be put through what they're being put through down there. And I, and I seriously hope that um, things change for them and that their, their government sees the light and that things move forward for them so that this can stop. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of our official, official stance on things. Um, we certainly stand behind the citizens of Nicaragua um, and want them um, to be the best that they can be from a cigar standpoint. It's very scary because if things change down there, you could see a whole different cigar market. Um, they really rely on the factories down there, and if things were to change, uh, they may not rely on the factories so much, and you might see quality change. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into it. 
that make it scary. Um, I can't quote all of them, but, you know, just know that um, if things change too much down there, that we could see a whole different cigar industry. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, what's 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 kind of crazy is that every year the Nicaraguan cigar market seems to take, like, if you were to make a big pie, you know, in, in all the different sections, every year that, that Nicaraguan cigar market has taken more and more of the action of the uh, global perspective or market share uh, for cigars. And, and there truly is a, a Nicaraguan boom. And it's not exclusive just to the boutiques, um, you know, because some of the classic facings are now dabbling around with Nicaraguan blends. Like, I never thought I would see a day where Avo has Nicaraguan. I never, ever thought I would see a day where I see Romeo and Julieta doing Nicaraguan blends, you know, and I think that consumers look at it from an American standpoint. Well, if we protest, which we protest a lot in America about random things that either bother us or affect us or affect our, our social groups and stuff like that, um, there's not so much of a democratic process in those in those um, <laughs> countries, you know. So just how, how that is, how that whole uneasiness is there and there's a lot of people that have an un, an uneasy perspective from their government now we have that here in the state sure but we're protected by laws and um over there not so much i remember one of the interviews when i was probably had to be in the first three months of stogie geeks here uh having a brain fart as to who who it was that we interviewed but I asked him, how'd you get involved in, in the cigar industry? And he said, well, quite frankly, and he quoted, um, you know how you have junior high here? It was like, yeah, well, that's our high school. I says, okay. He says, the government banged on my family's doors and said, this is what you're going to do <laughs> for work. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, 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 and I'm not making light of the subject, but it's not like the, the guy grew up and said, oh, I want to be a cigar roller. Like by choice in junior high, him and his family were out in the fields and his brother and, and father and doing in the fields. And that's what the government said that they were going to do. And then since then, he's left and he's in the States and he's in South Florida and he's doing well for himself. And he created a very popular uh, brand. But, you know, you have stories like that. And that was one of those. That was one of my story geeks takeaways of describing my stance here on the government. You know what I mean? Like Like their government and how... You know, even though Nicaragua is many miles away and how they do business is there. Same thing with, with Cuba. I know in 2015, under the Obama administration, uh, they were starting the, the easement of, of Cuba. And, you know, they were letting consumers take more and more of uh, the, the uh, Cuban cigars. I know Carnival Cruise Lines got involved and did a cruise to first cruise to Cuba. And they were starting to do that. And then obviously Trump administration comes. They do that. But getting back to the Obama administration, one of the th reasons why they were upset at that was because of the work laws, the labor laws of the pe people who are under the Cuban people, right? Uh, on, under the, the Cuban government and the Cuban administration. And it's like I almost wish I had like Obama's cell phone because I – no, because I was going to say, sir, with all due respect, right, like – you're comparing it to like a democratic process. It's not a democratic country. You know what I mean? So you, you can't complain about the, la the labor laws and you can't enforce our labor laws on, to produce their product because why do you think in the tech field stuff went over to, 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 to foreign lands? Because the labor was cheaper. Why was the labor cheaper? They don't treat their employees nicer. They give them lower salaries. They have... Uh, uh, worse working conditions than, than, than some people, you know? And so I could see where that would affect you guys, but now you guys are all back on track. Yeah, we're all back on track. And one of the things that I like about the Placencia factory is they're hailed as one of the best places to work down there because mm. um, they treat their employees so well. And, I mean, and this is what happens when you have a communist or a socialist nation. This is how things are run. Sure. And, you know, and that's why America would never survive as a socialist nation because <laughs> it just it just wouldn't work um, because people like their freedoms, mm -hmm. you know. So, so 
I, I'm glad that you're on track. You guys got IPCPR coming up. Yeah. Yeah, you guys getting pumped for that, getting ready for that. Yeah, I'm pumped for it. This will be my first trip to Vegas, so. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have a good time. You know, you meet a lot of different people in the industry, and, and, and you know, it's like, it, it's amazing how many blends there are. Like, when I do traveling outside of the Northeast, I always like to go into different shops and see, and, and it's amazing, like, uh, how popular sticks are in, uh, in other sections and just haven't got to the Northeast yet or vice versa and stuff like that, so. Absolutely. Can we can we just talk real quick? Was it was it uh, Drew Estates or, or it was Jonathan Drew? I think that just came out with a, a new liquor line or a new beer line or something. Well, I he, saw something on Facebook today. He's oh, I don't know I don't. Uh, um, he came out with um, with with the liquor line a couple years ago, and the, and, yeah, there's, okay. and there's one shop here in Rhode Island that actually carries them and stuff like that and. And it wouldn't surprise me that that he would get into to other stuff, you know. And you know, ha hats off to 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 Drew Estate. I mean, full disclosure, they're a sponsor of the show. Um, but you know, th they are a culture, and 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 they and they and and they really get it. You know what I mean? Like they get it now. Whether you know you, you like Drew Sticks and there, I mean, you know, they they certainly have a stick for everybody, um, yes, for do. sure. But you know, but but more importantly, they created a culture. And quite frankly, um, you know, uh, like you take an example of Don Wiggins, he created his own culture. And I think that if every cigar shop owner would just take a little bit more of a stance of really trying to have their employees be educated on that and 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 it would mean better tips for them too. Like if they're working for tips or bartending. If that business is set up that way, you know, and, and they're getting to know their customers more, they're going to go there. Like, I, it drives me crazy when I walk into a cigar shop. Now, when I walk into a cigar shop, nobody follows me because here in, in the Northeast, they know me. I don't like to be followed, so that's fine. But when a random person walks into the cigar shop, like, oh, if you need anything, well, just let me know. And it's like, come on, man. Like, get, like I, I almost like, like. I sit there and I'm like looking and I'm like, man, they've been in there for like four minutes. Like the human aren't that big. Get get in there. You know what I mean? Sometimes I walk in there and I'm like, hey, can I help you with something? You know, like, oh, you work here? I'm like, I used to. <laughs> you know, but it, it's just it's just crazy. But you also said something th about the Placencia factory and how it's it's well known out there. And, you know, just a side note on the industry, there's a lot of boutiques that come out of that factory. <laughs> you know what I mean? There certainly is. So there, it's like there. it's like you know if 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 anything were to get more out of hand than what it did, right? And I'm not here to, to paint a doom and gloom picture for the Nicaraguan cigar market, but you know I, I could not imagine <coughs> Nicaraguan and boutique tobacco n being a powerhouse without that factory. Put it this way, if. The Placencia factory had, in fact, been burned down. You're talking about losing some of the most precious tobaccos in the world. Sure. Um, you would have lost probably, if I, I'm going to throw out a number, don't quote me, but I'd say probably 50% of the market. At least. Absolutely. Would be, yep. would be gone for at least four years. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what's crazy? Like... All the different cigar podcasts that are out there, and we, we, we all have our space, right? And we all have our listeners and our followings and stuff like that. And, you know, no one wants to have those, those conversations. Just like, just like when the FDA. Like, no one, wanted, no one wanted to have the conversation about the FDA. Well, they're, they're, they're talking about a potential $275,000, $225,000, 250 I've heard 175. Pick a number, any number. Let's go with the highest. Let's go with th three, three and a quarter, which is the highest that I've heard. Right? It's it's like a rumor mill. Like no one wants to sit down and talk about real market position and fact. Right? I do on the Stogie Geeks show. Right? Uh, right. Some of the other hosts might might not like that stance or, or or have not liked that stance or whichever. Right? But you know, as long as I have a microphone here, I think that th those are important questions to be had because. Ultimately, like when it comes down to it, 
If they even enforce the FDA and we spend all this anti-FDA and Cigar Rights America comes in, here it goes, here comes the hate mail, right? Cigar Rights America comes in and tries to get a petition. This is what cracks me up, right? Cigar Rights America comes in and tries to get a petition signed, right? They get 33,000 signatures out of all the people for, for there. You know what that tells me? You know what that tells me? Me. The express opinions uh, uh, that are about to be said do not include Story Geeks' it's management. This is coming from Joe Hosempa, okay? You know, you, know, you, know, you know what that tells me? It tells me that if you take the 275 thou and you throw it over a batch of 250,000 sticks, which is a run, right? Which is a run. So when you come up with a blend, you produce 250,000 sticks, right? Your sticks are a buck higher. And then there you go. So ultimately, we're only talking about a dollar higher per stick. We're smoking premium tobacco. We're already spending eight, nine, ten, fourteen dollar robustos out there, right? We're already spending that. What's a dollar, right? And then it's the same thing um, with that. And, and then people, oh no, you don't understand it. If it, if it's a dollar here, it's going to be a dollar there, and it's going to. I get that. If you do some basic economics, right? Because I, I, you know, I follow economics. You do some economics, and you go down, and you and you talk about with that. Those eight dollar sticks were five dollars when I owned a cigar shop. You know what I mean? We we we. I, uh, when I owned a cigar shop, the boutiques were cheaper, and the classic facings were more expensive. Now you Absol have absolutely. <laughs> now you have the boutiques that are that are higher. And the classic face-ins are kind of checking them in on the bottom. Or you have the boutiques that try to produce it at this level to be competitive in that $10 range or whatever. Like, is 10 the magic number? The magic number Ten. The magic number is what the answer is. The magic number is what the consumer will spend. It, 10 is, 10, believe it or not, is that magic number. It's the magic number. Um, once you get over that $10 mark, people start to question it. And I don't know why, but you could market at $9.99. They don't care if you put it at ten oh one. They're gonna go. Well, why is this cigar ten oh one? And and it's it's the God's honest truth. Now you mentioned earlier what happened with the whole Rhode Island thing. I know that uh, oh, we yeah. all went. And yeah. So back in was that May? You were in you were in town for that? Was that May? I think that was May. Uh, end of April. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the end of April, early May. Uh, Chris, just full disclosure for the Stoy Geeks listening outside of Rhode Island, which there are a lot of them. And thank you for sometimes putting up with our Rhode Island shenanigans for sure. Um, Chris went to a hearing and spoke about the potential cap tax that Rhode Island has. Now, full disclosure, when you buy a cigar in the state of Rhode Island and in Connecticut, if, if it's over 64 cents or 67 cents, it's capped at 50 cents per stick. So basically, any premium cigar is taxed at 50 cents. The proposal on the table was to make that go to potentially 80 cents, okay? And then they were doing the whole distributor thing and then all of that. And Chris, you were actually, once you caught wind of this, you actually decided to stay in town for the extra three days to uh, help us and cru crusade against that. And one of the things that I, that, that I found fascinating is all but three shops showed up in this 37, eight shops here in Rhode Island. So all but three shops showed up and all of them had some valid arguments, right? But it was all against the 50 cents cap and not the single distributorship. And I'm saying, like, uh, uh, again, again, it's just like buying a boutique cigar, having it sit on your shelf and you, the shop owner, not working it and saying, well, it's a dog, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work because you don't educate your consumers. Like, realistically speaking, are the consumers really going to get upset over 30 cents? They've been taxed on other stuff. Gasoline, highway, we got a toll thing going. We got so much tax things going. And I'm sure Maine has its own gig. And I'm sure each state has its own gig. But, you know, uh, each state has their own tobacco laws. And they were doing that. And no one was arguing against, like, having it go through a distributorship. And it, 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 just, it just fascinates me how tunnel vision they are. But giving you an update is supposedly the distributorship is off the table and they are going to vote for that. That budget needs to be fiscally closed before June, like around June 17, 18, 19, like that area, to put in place for fiscal year. Rhode Island starts July 1. So July 1, July 1 is uh, 2019. 
in in the calendar in Rhode Island. So uh, we should know within about three weeks. But it looks like it's it's going to go up to the eighty cents. So originally, what we thought they the distributorship was just there just as a as There's, a ploy to make it look like they gave something. Yeah, up. it's you know, a distributorship, and 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 just to just to, to to back up my methodology for that. Okay, it's the same thing with Rhode Island. They're gonna they have a docket on the on the um they have a bill on the table. They're gonna just toll trucks like the the eighteen wheelers, the trucks, uh, instead of cars. And uh, like first of all, you can't. Well, I mean, you know, we've done this since, I don't know. Uh, this is like one of the things where I wish I had like the governor's cell phone number. Because I would say, do you remember the, like the, the, the segregation days of like, I don't know, Abraham Lincoln and stuff like that? You can't separate people or class systems of stuff. So if you're separating class systems of vehicles, you're making a separation, you're going to open yourself up for a lawsuit. I won't go any deeper, but it's like, because it, it's politics, right? This isn't Joe's political hour, right? But, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's one of the, but, but I talk about this stuff on my radio show, right? I'm like, I'm like I, am I the only one that sees that the trucks is a diversion to have them say, oh, we didn't know it was illegal, so now we got to do cars. And by the way, you know that easy pass you have that you were using to get over our two bridges? Yeah, it works for the tolls, so it'll be cheaper for you too. Well, bottom line is you're getting taxed. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like creating diversions. And, 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 and you know, the, the cigar industry, there's no exceptions to that uh, as, as well. You know, I think that there are certain factories that things come out and they get bigger and all of that stuff. But see, these are the hard questions that, which is why I'm glad that, you know, you, some of the people that we interview, I'm allowed to have these conversations. L l like our last episode, we interviewed uh, George Rico of Grand Habano Cigars, right? And we, we talked about like the future of the industry. Like Grand Habano, obviously we know who they are. Obviously they're a player. They're, they're in the background of almost every big hu humidor out there. There is some Grand Habano stuff. So there's a player, and he talked about keeping up with the new blends and what they have to do in order to keep up with new blends. Or well, guess what? He's not going to sell sticks. And that's coming from that. It's coming right from him. And it was like, oh, my God. Great. I get to interview someone in the industry who gets it. You know what I mean? And, and you know, you're one of the people that get it as well. So, But thank you for that. I will. Um, oh, I want to show you this thing, too. I, I can't zoom in on this, but check this out. This here is a custom-made pen. And maybe, if you can kind of see it, right? It's got a, a Padron label on it. And um, it was it was gifted to me, and so I, I now have a uh, Padron uh, anniversary um, serial numbered pen with the label on it and stuff. That's awesome. Now all you got to do is learn how to write. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Now you're gonna be in town next week. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping to. I'm hoping to come down, uh, visit a couple of my shops down there, and. Uh, Come over and visit the Stogie Geek Studio. If you want to come down next week, yeah. We have a fascinating interview next week, Stogie Geeks listeners. Scheduled. It is scheduled. We are get a chance to talk to a gentleman. Hold on. I got his name in my cell. Give me 30 give me, ah, give me seconds. All right. I should have this in my notes, but I don't. All right. We have a chance to talk to um, it, Mark Wessenberger from Rocky Patel Cigars. And for those of you who don't know who he is, that's Rocky Patel's right-hand man who was there for 13 years of Rocky Patel. So he was there from Rocky Patel to Rocky Patel <laughs> to Rocky Patel to Rocky Patel. Right? You get the... And then before that, he was a writer for Cigar Aficionado. So that's going to be a fascinating interview uh, for sure. And Chris, if you're going down, uh, if you're going to be in town, stop by. Maybe you might want to jump in and ask some questions too. We can figure that all offline. Absolutely, man. That would be an honor to meet him. Uh, he does great things for the industry, as does Rocky. Um, yeah, I'm. You know. I'm. I'm interested in, in finding out the fact, the 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 how you went from boutique to Rocky Patel. You know what I mean, and how you, <laughs> how, how you've, how you've done that, and you know, the, the, the it, it's going to be a fascinating conversation. I'm looking forward to that. If you want to sit in on that, just hit me up offline, and we'll take care of that. Absolutely. Awesome, Absolutely. Chris. 
always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much for giving us some of the inside baseball stuff on what's going on in your section of the cigar world. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've been listening to the Stogie Geeks. We will see you next week. Hopefully we'll be able to wrap up that interview. Enjoy. Enjoy.